Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Aaron Cohen Gadol. I'm a neurosurgeon. I have been involved with the management of spinal cord tumors for over 20 years, and I'd like to review briefly the details that are most important for patients who have been diagnosed with a spinal cord tumor and are trying to start their journey through their treatment. Spinal cord tumors arise within the spinal cord. In other words, they're intramedullary spinal cord tumors or they can be extramedullary. In other words, they start outside of the spinal cord and they impinge and compress the spinal cord. These tumors consist of different subtypes such as ependymomas, astrocytomas, hemangioblastomas, and meningiomas. And please do remember that when we talk about spinal cord tumors and these four tumor types, we're excluding tumors from the bony spine, which are much more common than spinal cord tumors. Spinal cord tumors, are, in fact, are very rare. They account for only 2 to 4 percent of all central nervous system tumors per year. They are more commonly seen in adults of 30 to 40 years of age, and they are certain sometimes more common in males, such as ependymomas, than in females that suffer more from meningiomas. The most common symptoms are slow and progressive back pain that may feel like it's radiating down to other parts of the bodies and extremities. So this slow progressive pain is critical. There are other symptoms that are also critical, such as progressive sensory loss, in other words, less sensitive to pain, temperature, and other cutaneous stimuli in the extremities or any part of the body, muscle weakness, therefore uh, having problem with walking, and loss of bladder control. So what are the diagnostic tests that we need for these tumors? The most important part one is magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI. It helps to define the soft tissues within the spinal cord and the interface between the tumor and spinal cord and what size of the tumor are we dealing with, are there cysts involved in other fluid cavities, and what kind of tumor we could be uh, planning to remove. If diagnosed with a spinal cord tumor, there are three ways to treat the problem. Number one, observation, surgical resection, or radiation. Most typically, a combination of above is necessary to most effectively eradicate the tumor. Observation is used and is a good approach for patients who have been diagnosed with a tumor incidentally and have no symptoms, and the tumor appears to be relatively benign under MRI. These may be preferred for, again, slow-growing tumors such as schwannomas and meningiomas, especially among the older patients. Surgical resection is the primary modality for the treatment, and the goal is to remove as much of the tumor as possible safely without uh, damaging the spinal cord. It can be combined with radiation for tumors that have spread or are invasive to the surrounding tissues. But again, most of the spinal cord tumors are benign and are very localized. For tumors that are more aggressive, we may use radiosurgery. In other words, concentrated beams of radiation are aimed at the tumor. It usually takes 30 to 50 minutes to do, and it's a one-session treatment. Or fractionated radiotherapy, where smaller doses of radiation are aimed at the tumor during several visits, and it takes up to 18 months to stop the growth of the tumor. Each session usually takes about 5 to 15 minutes. And there's also brachytherapy, where a radiation source is applied near the tumor, but usually brachytherapy is rarely used for spinal cord tumors. Spinal cord tumors in general, again, they cause worsening sensory motor symptoms, and therefore after surgery, these symptoms could worsen. Also, the cerebral spinal fluid leak, or in other words, spinal cord, spinal cord fluid leak can be a problem after surgery, also an infection. So these are three complications associated with surgery. The outcomes are excellent, typically, because most of these tumors are benign, they're external medullary, they're outside of the spinal cord, they compress the spinal cord, and when we remove them, the spinal cord can recover and provides miraculous reliefs for the patient. So patient outcomes also do depend on the tumor type and the extent of a spread, a spread to the surrounding tissues. Advances in surgical resection and microsurgery can be really uh, can have been very effective in removing these tumors 
and providing a new level of uh, relief for the patients. So overall, I would say surgical treatment of spinal cord tumors are among the most gratifying affairs in neurosurgery in general. It has been truly a great honor for me to be able to treat the patients and really see these excellent results. To see the patient coming in with significant difficulty ambulating and after surgery completely re returning to normal activity, it's really truly an honor. It's been a huge experience for the past 20 years and also I'm more than happy to be able to provide you with a second opinion if needed and please feel free to contact me if needed. Thank you.